This tutorial will show some of the valuable tools SAP 2000 offers when designing pre-stressed concrete box bridges. Bridge design requires a license for the BRIM module. The bridge we will review will be a three-cell, flat-sided box girder 36 feet wide. It will have two 100-foot long spans with a depth that varies as a parabola from 5 feet at the ends to 10 feet at the center. The deck is modeled with area objects, although the design procedure in this tutorial is also applicable to bridges modeled as spines or solids. Pre-stressing tendons are located in the girders of the box section. And it will support two lanes of traffic, each 14 feet wide. Next, we will review the tendons by going to the Brim menu and selecting the Bridge Objects command. Our bridge is completely defined in one object. On this form, select the pre-stressed tendons item and click the Modify Show button. We have a total of four tendons, one in each girder. Select any tendon as they are all the same and click the Modify Show button. Each tendon has a force of 600 kips. Click the Show All Tendons button, and we see that at the bridge end, the tendons are located near mid-depth. As we scroll, the tendons move in the deck depth, and at mid-span are near the top, returning to mid-depth at the other end. Now, go to the Define Load Cases to review the load cases. For this model, we have three, dead, pre-stress, and a moving or live load. Our moving load uses an HS20-44 truckload. We can now run the analysis. Once the analysis is complete, we can now focus on the bridge design. We start by going to the Design menu, and under Bridge Design, selecting Preferences. Here we can select the code, and we will use Ashto LRFD 2007. Next, we go to the Define Load Combinations command. Click the Add Default Design Combos button, and select the Bridge Design options. The form lists all of the strength, service, extreme event, and fatigue limit states defined by the Ashto LRFD 2007 code. To keep the number of design load combos to a relative minimum, in this example we will pick only the strength 1 and the service 2 limit states. If we click on the limit state drop down list, we see that these two limit states are available. Click on the Strength 1 limit state, and the load cases that will be used in the design combinations are shown. For the Strength 1 limit state, the code specifies two design combinations, 1.25 dead plus 1.75 moving load plus 1.0 pre-stress, and 0.9 dead plus 1.75 moving load plus 1.0 times pre-stress. Click on the Service 2 limit state to similarly see the load cases that will be used in the associated design combination. For the Service 2 limit state, the code specifies one combination, 1.0 dead plus 1.3 moving load plus 1.0 times pre-stress. Click the OK button twice, and a list of the design load combinations is displayed. In addition to the combinations just discussed, the program also creates group combos. For instance, we see a Strength 1 group followed by two Strength 1 combinations. Select the Strength 1 group and click the Modify Show button. We see that the group combos are simply envelopes of the associated design combinations. Select the first Strength 1 design combo, and we see that this combo is as previously discussed, 
1.25 dead plus 1.75 moving load plus 1.0 times the pre-stress, combined in an additive manner. We will quickly verify the other combos. Note that this example contains few load cases and few limit states. Most bridge models will contain substantially more of both, and thus the number of design combinations can be significant in the hundreds or even higher. Now that the design combinations have been set, we will set the design requests. Design requests are where we specify the type of checks we want to perform. For this model, we will do checks for the entire bridge, although the program allows you to specify checks for only a portion if so desired. We will create a total of four design requests, one for concrete box stress, one for shear, one for flexure, and one for principal stress. Starting with the concrete box stress, we will specify the demand set to use. Typically, one specifies only the group combination, as this envelopes all the design combinations that are part of the particular limit state. For this demand request, we will select Service 2 Group as the demand set combo. Our second design request will be for principal stress. And again, we select the Service 2 Group as the demand set combo. The next design request will be for flexure. And here we select strength one group as the demand set combo. The last design request will be for shear. And again we select the strength one group as the demand set combo. Alternatively, we could specify both strength one combinations and the result would be the same. Now that we have specified our four design requests, we are ready to run the design. Click the Design, Bridge Design, Start Design command. On the Perform Bridge Design form, note that we have the four design requests and the desired action. Click the Design Now button to start design. Note. Principal stresses may take a significant amount of computational time. Upon completion of the design, the bridge object response display form is displayed. With the design option selected, we can view the checks for the various design requests. Starting with Design Request 1, the Service 2 limit state generates an envelope of the stresses along the bridge, in this case the longitudinal stress at the top left. To see where this envelope falls with regard to allowables, we check the Tension Limit and Compression Limit checkboxes. Using the drop-down box, we can select other locations for the stress envelopes. It appears that these stresses fall within allowable limits. Design Request 2 shows that the envelopes for the Service 2 limit state appeared to slightly exceed the tensile limit. It might be desirable to increase the force in the tendons or add reinforcing. We can also view the Bridge Object Response Display form by going to the Display Show Bridge Forces command. Selecting Design Request 3, we see a plot of moment along the entire bridge for the strength one limit state. Click the positive resistance and negative resistance options and we see that the moment lies within allowable values. Select design request four and we see a plot of shear demand versus capacity along the length of the bridge for strength one limit state. Note that the demand is below one which is obvious with the DC limit checkbox checked. We can also view the required shear rebar area and the torsion rebar area and a combination of both. 
and also view results for each of the webs if so desired. All the information displayed graphically in this form is also available in tabular format via the Show Table button. Switching back to Design Request 1 and clicking the button, we see all of the stresses along with the governing combinations. This tabular information may also be exported to Excel. This concludes this tutorial.